Georgia Southern Football 96. Brought to you in part by Coke. Always Coca-Cola. And by McDonald's. Home of the Arch Deluxe. And by Statesboro's Bullock Memorial Hospital. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 96. I'm Scott Pierce, along with Eagles head football coach Frank Elwood. Georgia Southern homecoming in Statesboro, Georgia. Tough game, a Southern Conference game against East Tennessee State University. And coach, the Buccaneers bring in a 7-1 and one record into Paulson Stadium. They're an outstanding football team, um, and they certainly deserve whatever ranking they have. They were undefeated uh, in the league. They still are, unfortunately. We were hoping we could change that for them, but we just couldn't quite win the game. Georgia Southern facing uh, some challenges over the week, and we talked earlier, and you said uh, that we could talk about it, the suspensions that you had uh, on the weekend at the Citadel. Game. Right. We had, uh, we had a problem, and it was a, a curfew violation strictly, and uh, we all felt, our coaching staff, we discussed it, felt that we needed to take some kind of action because players had been warned previously. They know the rules, and, and they know what goes into getting ready for a football game. So uh, in order to emphasize that, we... we created the suspensions uh, based on what the penalty was and they should they'll be reviewed this weekend and I think they'll all be available for next week's game. Uh, 18 players suspended uh, for the game yesterday against East Tennessee State so you think going in that's going to make things difficult but the team really picked it up and, and played a step above what they've been playing. Well it's you know it's funny how that works I don't know whether the players were trying to make a statement to each other um, We've had no trouble, no trouble at all this season getting our team ready to mm -hmm. play. Sometimes we don't play smart football. Sometimes we make some mistakes that we shouldn't be making. But our kids almost always play. I think the first uh, quarter at Chattanooga was the only one that I really would say that it didn't look like we were ready to play football. And I have to take the blame for that because it was the first quarter. So, you know, I, I think they came out and they played as... Uh, they played spirited, they were aggressive, and that's what we need every week. It was a big game for the Eagles. Paulson Stadium, homecoming, all the pageantry. We'll take a look at the first half highlights coming up right after this. Money, money, money. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. The Buccaneers of East Tennessee State come to Statesboro for homecoming. Mike Cavins' boys roll into town. Sporting a very good record, and last year, sort of an upset defeat up in the mini dome last year of the Eagles. Well, he's, he's in his uh, fifth year at mm -hmm. East Tennessee, and his program shows the results of a lot of hard work, and, and I think he and his staff have done a great job. Uh, last year, I, they got off to a bad start last year. They had five games on the road right mm -hmm. off the bat, and that, that created a little bit of a, a downbeat for them. But uh, they came back and beat us, and we had to, we were trying to get a little revenge, but we couldn't quite pull it out. And it was a tough game yesterday, especially a very strong team for Southern to face, and they played very well. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. A beautiful day, homecoming in Paulson Stadium, and you can see a gorgeous day. The cold front came through. It rained earlier, but cleared out nicely. Wind would be a little bit of a factor. Yeah, and it was uh, it was a concern for us. We have a, an untested punter mm -hmm. and uh, a snapper that hadn't snapped for us except uh, once in the first game. Uh, it was, um, I think there were some people that were raising their eyebrows, coaching staff a little bit on right. that situation, but it worked. ETSU is going to receive the ball in the first half, and Chris Chambers' kick goes out of bounds, at around, out of bounds around the 24-yard line. And they come right out running the ball. All right, that's uh, freshman tailback. Uh, I forget his first name, but his last name's Walker. And he, he did a great job, but he had... Uh, he had to think 170 yards roughly in the game, which is a, that's a day's work, as we well know. The defense held three and out for the Buccaneers. A short punt into that win. It bounces, and Southern's going to be uh, in good position on the field. Great, great field position, and uh, hopefully we could take advantage of it. We just couldn't get our offense, just couldn't quite spark in the first half. We were having trouble making some adjustments. We've got some uh, young, untested players in our lineup in our front uh, five and I think that slowed us down just a little bit. Plus, a, a lot of people don't realize East Tennessee had an outstanding defense. They're ranked in the tops statistically of everything in the league. And in his first punt of the day and he gets off a of beauty. That was a boomer. I think it was a 48 yarder if I'm not right. mistaken. And only a one yard return. Right. The great coverage. Travis Taylor was down there first and he got blocked but that's what that's what brought the rest of our troops in. ETSU comes out throwing, completion up to about the 27-yard line. Ryan's a senior, and he's got great statistics. He can really throw the football. And he hit that receiver Satterfield about 10 or 
14 times yesterday. They, Outstanding. They have great receivers. They, they, of course, they work on it, and that's that's their offense, basically. Right. They, they run a little more this year than they have, and I think that's what makes them a better team. And you can see the run here picking up about eight, nine yards off the right side. The Georgia Southern's defense played this well. Was a great shot right there and a great catch. I think that was Adigan that time. Mm -hmm. Then the there's Walker. Down to about the five-yard line. And then the walk-in for the touchdown. Looks awful easy right there, and <laughs> it's a, kind of scary. It's 7-0 with the extra point, and um, I don't know. You wonder if uh, we can stay in this game. The offense comes out, and you put Greg Hill in at quarterback. Right. We plan to play Greg and keep playing him. He got what banged up on that first He play. fell on the ball and knocked the wind out, and, and they, they just checking him for a rib injury. That's uh, Reggie Garland catching mm -hmm. that little delay. Chambers punting from his end zone. He's going to get one out that's going to take it a back and good roll back across. Right. There's Travis again downfield. He, Travis had a fine, fine football game. UTSU back to the run. He's going to pick up about 14, 15 yards off right that's guard there. Eric Carter coming up to make the hit. There's Hart Carter again. And at this point, at times, they did make it look pretty easy, right. but then the defense is going to stiffen. There's Bond Sellies Allen, who made a nice breakthrough. Good, Good hit there. Definitely. Travis Taylor again that kept that from being caught. So they have to settle for a field goal. Or they try it anyhow. Long attempt, mm -hmm. and it is going to be wide to the right. No good, so Southern in the game at only 7 nothing, and you get Roderick going a little right. bit. Right, Roderick had 94 yards on the day and, and played well. They they did a good job of defending him, but uh, the fake to Roderick holds a lot of the defense. That's right. what we have to remember. Chambers again fields the snap and is going to get the punt off across midfield. Chris was a little nervous, and he, you notice he had trouble catching in his hands. Mm -hmm. He prayed a little, little bit, and right. that takes up a little extra time. Big interception, how hard. Right, he came up with a great interception there. That was the first play they had to win, and I think they were trying to take advantage of it. Kenny hits Tobias across the middle. We still have to punt, and there's... there's, there's go ahead, there's... The where, one mistake. The, Chris just dropped the ball, and they... Of course, you can advance it. It's like a fumble in that mm -hmm. position, and uh, it can be advanced. And sure enough, that did it. And that makes it 14 to nothing. And that's how the half is going to end. Georgia Southern goes into the locker room trailing East Tennessee 14 to nothing. But you have to feel good about the way the defense has played because East Tennessee has really scored some points this year. Right. We had to get uh, we had to get our offense straightened mm -hmm. out and get them back on track and get some adjustments made and figure out exactly what was going on and. And I, I felt good at this point in time. There was, uh, there was not a matter of uh, trying to inspire a team because they were inspired. We'll see how both teams adjusted from the locker room speeches right after this. Stay tuned. Georgia Southern Football 96 continues. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. The Eagles trailing at halftime, 14 to nothing against East Tennessee State, and it's homecoming, Coach. But like we said earlier, the defense made some stands. The offense and special teams having a little bit of trouble. Well, that that was the case, and uh, you know we we worked very hard at halftime, and you got a short time to make mm -hmm. the adjustments you have to make, and and try to figure out your game plan for the second half. And it, it's not. Uh, uh, you, you have to almost be a rocket scientist to get it in. <laughs> and things definitely did turn around for you coming up in the second half. And the big story all day long was the defense. The defense has played exceptionally well at times this year. And one big part of that is the defensive line. And we're going to take a special look at the constructor of the defensive line, Tommy Macon. For years, coaches have said offense sells tickets, but defense wins football games. Coach Tommy Macon also believes this. The team that hits the hardest is going to win, and, and defensively you have to hit hard. And I think our guys understand that they have to play hard all the time, and, and our defensive philosophy is Gator, which means get after them aggressively, and that's what I try to teach the guys. The players work hard for Coach Macon. Each day they are drilled and drilled, but their hard work will eventually pay off because the defensive line knows they have the opportunity to stop the ball first. When the ball across the line of scrimmage, the defensive line are the first people that can stop the play. And if you know if they don't stop it, it goes to the linebackers into the third level uh, defensive back. So you know it's very important that we do our job up front. 
Coach Macon not only tells his players how things should be done, he also shows them. He teaches them to move their feet and use their hands in order to be more aggressive and more effective. Defensive line standout Lee Brooks said he enjoyed working with Coach Macon because Coach Macon is very knowledgeable about football and uses that knowledge to motivate his players. Well, each week we work on the same fundamentals, uh, using our hands and, and working with our feet. And But each week, a new scheme as far as what the offense does to us blocking-wise. We work on those different blocks, and uh, it may be uh, the same play from team to team, but they may block it differently. So we practice on those blocks and get repetitions so that we can defend those blocks. And as a look at Coach Tommy Macon, we'd like to thank Chris Hartley and Deidre Jones for putting that piece together. And Coach Macon has done an outstanding group, an uh, outstanding job with that group this year. They're, uh, they were inexperienced. Uh, we had to make some changes. We've switched some personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, and notice Lee Brooks sometimes plays Andy, sometimes plays tackle. So um, that's a lot of switching around, and it takes a lot of coaching, believe me. That's right. 30 minutes of football left. Before we get to the second half, let's take a look at some of the players' feelings as we go to our From the Locker Room segment. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, like I said, we just, the guys that, you know, had to step in and play, they really did a good job. I, and uh, trying to step up for the, some of the guys that were out and playing hard. I mean, we really played hard and got after them. You know, we couldn't <clears throat> fault anybody for the game because we, everybody played, you know, 100%. We knew all week we was underdogs. Certain people say 14, some say 21. But, you know, we just come out every week trying to get a win. And uh, we came in. We knew they was going to try to run up the score or whatever. But we came out. The defense played I'd like to congratulate defense for playing a heck of a ball game and uh, the offense just came up short. You know, the coaches gave us an excellent plan. Well, I mean, you know, we had a you know a, lot, a few guys missing, key players that, you know, that hurt us, you know, when we were missing them. So we just came together as a team and said, hey, I mean, we got we, we to gotta pull from each other, you know, even though we're missing a lot of guys that we really need. Joining us on Georgia Southern Football 96, I'm Scott Pierce with head coach Frank Elwood. And coach, we're coming out for the second half, Southern trailing, homecoming, 14 to nothing. You really have to get the offensive uh, attack going in the second half. Well, that was our, our main discussion at halftime. And, uh, you know, I felt good about our defense. And I, th and I think uh, the second half then just proved that they were, they were there to play. That's right, and Georgia Southern was able to get the ball to uh, start the second half. And uh, let's take a look at the highlights. Second half at Paulson Stadium here, and after we had the ball, we're going to turn it over right back to East Tennessee, and they come out on the attack. That's Ryan on the pass. I think he completed, uh, I think it was 19. That's right, and there's a, and fumble, a fumble immediately on the right. pass, and Georgia Southern's going to get the ball, and this was the break that we've been looking we for. We needed one, and we went into our shotgun offense, and, and uh, started throwing that was Tristan Belser catching that one, and then this one is out of the hands of their defender, and Maurice Bing caught it right on the sideline and inbounds. Great concentration by Maurice to make that it grab. Was. That's Throw Maurice again. Across the middle, Maurice is going to fight his way to about the 20-yard line, and the offense looks like it's clicking with the pass, and how about a little run with it? There's the option out of the shotgun, and Tobias does a good job of staying inbounds and getting to about the six, six-and-a-half-yard line. And then the workhorse, Roger Russell down to about the one. And this is the pitch to Benny. It was a quick pitch, had to be, because of their defense, and Benny got it in the end zone. There were some flags, but East Tennessee was offside. Touchdown good. Extra point is good. It's now 14-7, to and you got to feel good about your position now with plenty of time left well, to go. Well, you know, it's, 20, it's in the third period, and that was a good drive, and I think our confidence is starting to come. We almost had that kickoff. That's, uh, those aren't accidental short kicks. Right. Those are uh, planned short kicks. East Tennessee is going to come out, and get the run and a missed tackle and you're going to pick up about 30 yards. Yeah, it? I was, uh, once again, I was a little concerned, but uh, that was just a missed tackle in the backfield. We're mm -hmm. still hitting them in good shape. That's Josh Smithers making that hit. That was an outstanding tackle. East Tennessee is able to drive and they're going to take it down with a pass playoff to the left flats, but another fumble that they recover. The defense steps it up again. Good job. Good job by Lee Brooks, Travis Taylor. There's the throw in the end zone, and Eric Thigpen got to it. 
East Tennessee had several fourth and one plays yesterday down close that the defense for Jordan right. Southern was able to stifle. The extra point, or rather the field goal is good, so it's 17 to seven now. Southern trailing, and it doesn't look good here with the interception. Well, we get the ball back, and uh, uh, they did a good job there blitzing, and they read our hot pattern and picked it off, and I thought, oh my goodness, but we get it right back. We go to the counter option, and this is Kenny on his long run of the day. Did a great job. Georgia Southern continues to move, and now we're going to run the option around the right side. Tobias, good block by Roderick Russell out front. Another good block by our wide receiver. Definitely a big difference. It's sort of like the uh, shotgun and loosen them up, and now you're right. able to run it. Now we're able to move, and Kenny does a great job cutting here. I was hoping he'd get in the end zone, but he got it to the four-yard line. Then we're going to run the option out to the left. I didn't realize until I saw the video that that pitch was close. To, <laughs> a little to, scary. To that East Tennessee defender. And Kenny Robinson doing what he does so well, scoring the touchdown. It's now with the extra point, 17 to 14, East Tennessee. And the defense has to come through and hold the Bucks so we can get the ball back. And we get it back. There's 9.50 left in the, in the game. And uh, we come out with the option to Tobias. Kenny on the keeper is going to... Kenny does a great job getting it up to within one yard of the first down. And on this is the fourth down play. Do you see him trip Some just stumbled a little bit. A little bit and you can see him tripping oh, over the uh, offensive lineman. And that's how it ends up. Southern could not convert on fourth and one. And a tough loss to the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State, 17 to 14. And, you know, the Buccaneers are playing pretty strong this year. Well, they've got an interesting match next week. It's mm -hmm. Marshall and East Tennessee, and it's at East Tennessee, which I think is a definite advantage for them. Um, Marshall's playing well. Evidently, they, they beat Citadel pretty good, mm -hmm. 56 to 24, I think it was. And uh, uh, so it ought to be a great game. But you never know. That's right. And it's a tough loss for the Eagles, but it doesn't get any easier. Stay tuned. We'll have a look ahead at Georgia Southern versus Furman right after. Here, we're on the road against Furman next weekend. Football 96.